Hey guys, it's M, and I hope you are doing really well. It's a new year and it's time to learn some new things. And today's video is kind of like a follow up on my previous video. So if you haven't checked that one out and you are interested in doing that, I will have it linked. And this is something I use when I create emotes. Honestly, it's been a game changer since I figured out how to do it. And I think it will really help you, doesn't matter what you're doing. And I also want to say if you like the content and you're able to stick through the weird and you actually learn something, please remember to like the video, leave suggestions in the comment section if there's anything you want me to elaborate on or anything you want me to touch on. And then I also want to mention that I do use Clip Studio Paint in this specific video. So if you're using Procreate or anything like that, those programs will have the same tool but it will look a little different. In my video, you will see zoom ins of exactly where to find the button, how to set it up in your layers. So you can follow along or you can pause and work while you're watching. So I really hope that this helps out some people. And I want to say thank you to the people who have subscribed, who are supporting, who have stuck around. You guys truly make me feel like I'm doing something good and I can't wait to get into it a little bit more. I love you, bitch. And then for the people who are interested, I have done a speed paint of my character and the change that my character has gone through. And I was thinking that's kind of the ideal video to do like a Q&A session over. So if you have any questions that you would like me to include in that, then you can also comment them below on this video. And then I'll know for that Q&A session that I can answer any questions. So if you want to find out about me, what led me to art, anything like that, if you have specific art questions that you want a quick answer on, please put them down below because that will really help me. I think that's going to be better than just having the speed paint with no interaction whatsoever. So please leave your suggestions below. But I'm not going to ramble anymore. We're going to get into the video and we are going to touch on mask layers. Mask layers are very simple to learn and will help in so many aspects of your art. It kind of feels like a superpower in digital art. So I'm very excited to share this with you. I'm Batman. So to start off, I'm going to show you how to set up a mask layer and how it applies to this pink block on the screen. So you start by making a new layer and you want to make sure it's directly above the layer you want to influence, in this case, the pink block. And then you press this button, which will turn it into a mask layer. And then the red line on the left side of the layer shows you that this is now a mask layer, so you can keep track of your layers as you work. And bam, you have it. That's it. Anything you do on the mask layer will only show up on the layer directly below it. And it's as easy as that. Later, you can learn to stack mask layers and use different effects on it. But today in this video, we're only going to focus on how to take away solid outlines that can be helpful when you make something like emotes. And I realized when doing emotes that some people like the art style of the solid outline where others were more drawn to the realistic outline. So it doesn't matter which style you prefer. I think it's good practice to know how to do both for in case someone asks you for something different. So I made this cute thing. I don't know if it's a dog or a cat. Maybe you can let me know in the comments, maybe cat dog. But as you can see, he has a very solid outline at the moment and I want to change that to a more realistic edge. So it's important that I look for the layer that's the outline and make my mask layer right above that. Then I can paint any color over the outline and it will not change the image below, given that your stuff is on different layers. So the main way I do this is in three steps. So the first step is I make the mask layer. I make sure to put it above my outline and it's there. Step two, I'll use a normal paintbrush and my color picker tool to go along the edges and select the color closest to the line and then match my outline to that color. This will take a while as your image will have different shades all along the edge, depending on your shading. And you want to make sure it matches well. So if you focus on this and spend some time on this step, then the last step will be a lot simpler and easier. So I'll keep doing this for a long time, making sure to use my color picker tool and my brush the whole time interchangeably. And it's also a good time now to make sure you know the shortcuts on your pen or your tablet, depending on what you're using. 
Um, with the tab that I'm using, I can just use the button on my pen to switch to the color picker tool, which makes this step a little bit quicker. If you're working with a mouse, you can just go and select the tool and then come back, select the pencil and then go over. It might take you a little longer. So this is where your shortcuts and your tablet will really help you in that regard. If you do work with a mouse, you can also check what the shortcut is for the different tools and then use that on your keyboard. That might also make your work go a little faster. But basically in the third step, I'll make a layer above the mask layer. And you want to make sure that this layer doesn't automatically also become a mask layer. So make sure it doesn't have that red line on the left side. If it does, then you just click the mask layer tool again. And then when you've made this layer, I normally use a less dense brush than a paintbrush. So in this case, I use the color pencil tool and I will go over where the line and the drawing meet. So I'll pick the color that is there again and then just lightly go over that. And this will just smooth out any differences that you came across when you were doing the second step. It's only these three steps and the image transforms completely. You can see the difference between it having an outline and not having an outline. Both are good, both are good art styles. It will just depend on what you want or what your client want, want if you're making it for someone else. So I really love this tool and I hope you found the video helpful. And as always, if you did and you made it this far into the video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more and stick around. And then if you have any specific questions, you can leave them in the comments section. I try to answer all of them and suggestions really help me make content that I know you want to see. That's basically it. And I hope you stay creative. Never give up. You can learn anything if you stick to it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.